Well, now it's time to fix my tractor. It's got some bad brakes, bad rear wheel bearings, and broken gear in the transmission. These problems all year, but I've been too busy to get to it, but I'm going to be having to drive it home soon, so I'm going to do it now. So there's what we're up to in parts. About a thousand bucks worth. It's all a write-off for the farm, so that's no problem. This is the final drive gear that goes to each rear wheel. has one on each side. I haven't taken it apart yet, but years ago one of these tooth, teeth broke off, so I'm believing that's what's wrong. When you're going really slow, this tractor will suddenly jerk to a stop and go kunk, because the gear rolling into it doesn't line up because there's a missing tooth. That was like $570. Well, then there's a bunch of bearings. There's all the boxes. Some axle seals. Some two kinds of brakes. It's got disc brakes, kind of. And it's and it's got band brakes. So these I think are for the parking brake and these are for the regular brakes when you push your brake pedal. We've got the floor pans removed, pretty simple. Looks like any other old tractor down in there. The brakes are in there on the side of the transmission, not in the wheels like a car is. So I've got to remove the seat pad then this upper plate and then I can get into the transmission. When I'm into the transmission then I can probably release something in the differential and pull the whole axle right out like you would in a normal car. When I get the axle pulled out I believe I can change that big gear that's down in there and hopefully find the missing tooth so it doesn't get caught up in the other gears and maybe I'll have to drain all the oil in the transmission because it'll probably be half full. It is a four-speed transmission, but with an automatic torque converter. Now that the seat's off, let's see if we can get this cover pried up. Okay, let's see what we got in Pandora's box. Hmm, some big gears. Well, good news and bad news. These have just been fully rotated a few times around, and so have these. And there's no teeth missing. There's no teeth either in the little pinion gear that drives the big main gear. And I just checked all the spider gears and all that in there. So, I wasted five hundred and something dollars for a part I'll probably use in the future, because I did have to change one before. So now I've got to get off those big main gear nuts, because we got the wheels off now, so that I can change those wheel bearings. Maybe they're bad because I just found out I had a grease fitting that I didn't know I had, and so I've never greased my axle bearings. Damn, that's stupid. I didn't even bother using a wrench to get these off. I just pulled the cotter keys off and got a steel bar and whacked them with a hammer, and they both loosened up. No problem. They've been living their life in gear oil. Ew. Big nuts are off. Yank that shaft. Right. Don't let it fall on the ground. Well, that shaft is well lubed. Huh. Okay, stand it, stand it on its end. Keep it clean. Alright, here. I know you need a shirt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's all good. Well, even though I've never greased that, gre that bearing, it's a lot of grease in there. I wonder if the bearing's actually bad, but this thing was seizing up in the summertime and not moving when I was driving it back to the barn one day from over yonder. All right, hammer boy, knock this one out. Oh, a little bit more. Okay, just leave it while we examine it. Well, we're going to inspect the surface, see how bad it is. Actually, it doesn't look too bad, but for some reason it was locking up on me. Okay, pull it all the way out. Hmm. I hope it was the outside bearings, not the inside bearings, that were screwing up. Wow, totally tubular, man. Upon further inspection, we have found our bearing problem. Look at the pits up there. No wonder they were locking up. Now I have to go check the other side. 
Okay, pull hard and see if we get that seal out. Okay, let me get the persuader bar. Okay, now he's got the true persuader. That'll get the job done, eh? Yeah, that'll get the job <laughs> that's done. That's called a wrecking bar. Yeah. Now, <laughs> let's check this bearing out. Um, I'll just set her out of the way, I guess. Uh, we'll have to clean a little grease off first. Well, sure is a good thing we took her apart. Oh my, oh my God, look at that bearing. It's almost completely severed from wear. <laughs> good thing. Got to remember that grease fitting now. Might even have to change it. It looks so rusty. Oh well, th 1974. It's been a long time, I guess, since those new bearings are in there. So how do you remove a bearing in a blind hole? Well, you're supposed to knock it out from the other side with long drift pins or something like that. But I'm not going to pull that whole axle assembly housing out. So I'm going to slit it with a cutting torch like I usually do. And that, and that takes all the tension off of it. So I use an extremely hot flame so it heats up the bearing quicker than it heats up the cast iron around. And that doesn't even really matter because cast iron barely cuts with the cutting torch anyways. And I just cut a slit in it. Maybe there is such a tool that could hook it there and hook it there and pull it out, but I'm no professional at this. I just know how to fix bearings. Fire in the hole. <laughs> oh, look at that tubers. We're going to blow up. Just kidding. Just a little bit of fire, no big deal. I can see he's got his safety glasses on, tubers. And all my safety clothing. Alrighty, I don't think I cut any cast iron, and I'm burning fossil fuels, so now I'll have to chisel at that and see if I can get it out. It's recording, just point out what I'm doing. Yeah, it's going to come out easy now. And I've got to save the old piece so I have like a mandrel to push the new bearing in. Ugh, maybe I gotta get my enforcement bar again. Where did it go? That's working. Redneck ingenuity. There we go. Let's see what it looks like after I clean her off. Wow, it looks pretty chewed. Not good, tubers. Not good at all. Even some chunks broke off that are in there someplace. <laughs> Nasty. Nasty. Next, now we gotta go do the other side. Okay, click her off. Damn it. Got her. Yeah, fire in a hole again. Shut the and she's moving no problem.
This one's giving you a little bit of a holic, Dave. Uh, some of them do. Give them a good slap, they smart now. <laughs> Oh, yep. that one just hit me, son of a bitch. Uh, some of them do that too. <laughs> I one because she hit me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we're ready for more cleanup and bearing installation. Well, I finally got that hole all cleaned out, and let me tell you, that was the greasiest, slimiest, dirtiest hole I ever stuck my fingers in. <laughs> it's all in that rag now, if you know what I mean. Well, here's my redneck bearing installation tool method. Put that on there and start tapping it in just to get it started. Then set the old bearing on it so I can press it in around the edge. But I didn't find anything that fits inside of the old bearing to make it into a good pounding tool. So I'm going to set the old bearing into the old bearing. I'm going to set this oxygen cylinder cap on there and then whack that with my mini sledge and knock her in. Well, I've got that one halfway in now. All I did was put it on there and hit a hammer against that and knock it in. Now I'm going to set this homemade tool on there and finish knocking it all the way with that piece of metal or that thing pushing it in with the hammer. She's in a lot farther. Only a quarter inch left to go. Yeah, looks like I have to use this thing now. It's working. farther. Hmm. Looks like we could be there. Just give it a few hard wax now. All right, now I just gotta pop out the old piece. Where's my little pry bar? Pretty simple. Sweet. Hit stop. Have a grease insertion tool to grease these bearings. So do it the old fashioned method. Pack it in like this. No, no such thing as too much. Almost kind of like uh, not enough Vaseline either, right, Dave? I don't use that stuff. <laughs> Much better alternative for lubricants. Yeah, for Working sure. on heavy machinery than Vaseline. For sure. We also liberally apply the lubricant to the big hole where the bearing is. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Uh, it's just funny. I don't know what you're thinking. Mm. Put it in. Oh. Now I'm just working the grease a little. Now, as I can show you, I've already pre-lubed the seal surface so you don't have a dry piece of rubber rubbing on a dry shaft and burning out the bearing seal. So now I'm ready to put that in. Of course, make sure it goes in the right way. And to install it, first I gotta get the K, I mean, grease on my fingers. <laughs> it 
so that I can hold my installation plate. Really well. More redneck, redneck ingenuity. Perfect. Pack a little grease there. A little more. Never can have too much. Mm, two fingers is better. There. Now we're ready to insert the big shaft into the hole. And then the job will be almost done. Cool. Well, mm -hmm. well, I wouldn't say big, it does feel kind of small. <laughs> All right. Watch this. Watch an expert. <clears throat> Make sure there's nothing down there. Like a pro. <laughs> Next, the other side. So after shoving those axles in as far as we could, didn't video at all, we had to hit this somewhat to push the axle in more because the bearings are a bit tight to slip in. Then as the shaft was coming through, put the nut on, and well, I was hammering, he was tightening the nut at the same time, pulling them through. And did the same to the other gear. Now we're ready to put the tranny cover back on, silicone her back up, and then the bitchin' job of getting all those rusty bolts out and that big cover off and see if we can clear that plate and get it out and do those brakes. So wheels are on and that's the last step.